but I don't remember the exact year, but it's probably going on 15, 16, 17, 18 years ago now. I felt like God gave me a picture and a vision. And I really like this beautiful story when Jesus encounters Peter on the boat and he wants to preach to the crowd. Peter had just come off the water from fishing all night. Zero, right? It's nada. And Jesus said, why don't you, why don't you take me out so I can preach? And after he's done preaching, he looks at Peter and says, let's go out a little bit further and cast your net. Luke 5. Probably one of the biggest concerns for me uh, is just the church at times being asleep. Sometimes there could tend to be, and there still is, competition between churches and ministries. And uh, those barriers begin to break down over time. You find out that the pastors aren't, you know, we're not looking to uh, dominate the, maybe the 10% of billings that goes to church, but realize that within this area and surrounding areas, there's actually about 160,000 people. And if only 10% go to church, we all got a lot of work to do. Through this specific thing, which is Billings Night of Worship, it opens the church's eyes to the reality of God's nature and who He is. First step to getting the Night of Worship going was getting together a core group. So we just started to think through, regardless of denomination, who can we think of that's full of the Holy Spirit and hungry for more? So I just started reaching out personally. I'm just like, you, I see what you're doing, it matters, let's get together. So it was probably, I mean, between 25 to 40 people that responded. We get everybody together in one room. And what we started with, we had food and we're telling jokes and we're laughing. But mostly we said, just tell your God story. Like, how do you know the Lord? Why are you here? What has He called you to? Yeah. The older pastor just broke because he could so clearly see that God was on this life and that He had been missing it and that He had been thinking that what they were doing was the only thing that mattered or made a difference in their city. And it just became so clear yeah. that we all carried the same heart. We're praying the same prayers, that God has planted us here for the same reason and we somehow didn't see that or know that before. The kingdom of God is the central theme of what Jesus preached. He said, seek first, not the church, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. This is about the kingdom. This isn't about my church or your church. This is about what God's doing on the earth. And I want to be a part of what God's doing on the earth. When we did our first core team meetings, we'd gather, we'd talk about what God was doing in our city, the things that He put in our hearts, and then we just worship together. And it's funny because if we were getting together and sharing a theological message, we all would have had little differences Massively and all of that. Different opinions. However, when we were all worshiping the living God, everything came together. Nobody has a problem with worshiping Jesus. I mean, that should be pretty core to us in any denomination. So I feel like when we got together and we worshiped, even with just a small group of people, all the walls come down. You know, the enemy is so good at dividing. He's so good at seeding thoughts. He's so good at uh, putting presumptuous thoughts in our minds concerning our brothers and sisters in Christ. There's no Pentecostal side of heaven. There's no Baptist part of heaven, Catholic part of heaven. Episcopalian part of heaven, four square part of heaven. Heaven is heaven. We don't have to all believe the exact same thing. I think Jesus probably believes different than what we believe, you know, but yet he unifies with us. So I think that's a beautiful picture that you don't have to agree on everything in order to be in unity. Unity is not conformity. Unity is, is coming together despite differences and saying, I love you. The denominational walls break down. It's like a big family reunion is the word that that's on my heart. When you see, like if you look at each church body as their own family unit and they meet every Sunday morning, they have their traditions, they have their things that they do. And I just can't help but think that God is so excited to see all his kids together in one place, one location without those denominational walls. Jesus even said, we will be known by our love for each other. It, the world is supposed to look at the body of Christ going, there's something different in how we treat one another that draws them to Him. It ends up, uh, it can be a little confrontational, but I do say it in love. 
that we guard against competition and try to trying to kind of keep everything to ourselves to be able to guard and protect the thing that Jesus prayed for in John 17, which was that unity, not only the thing that he prayed for, but the thing that he died for. And it will be the thing, that love for one another will be the thing, according to him, that will show the world that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So I just want to encourage any anybody who feels like your city could host an event like this. I think every city could host an event. So I would just encourage you to find a couple people, two or three people, and begin praying into this. Let God birth that dream in you. Begin to pray into it and see what God does. Let Him bring the people. If you're going to see a move of God, you've got to say amen to your prayer and start putting boots on the ground and go do it. Keep moving forward. When you hit a roadblock, push past it. Keep moving forward. God wants to see this happen more than you do. Well, I saw a picture of a lake. And on that lake were these boats with these different sized nets being cast on the lake. Of course, the lake being Billings, the boats being different churches casting their net. And every net had different sizes, different sized churches. I felt like the nets represented the field that the churches had influence over. But what was noticeable to me was the gap between the nets. And I saw those nets growing over years, right? Just getting bigger. Each net just got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And pretty soon those nets were touching that the entire lake was covered by the work of kingdom work of all of the churches coming together to cast that net. I think that's what we're beginning to see. I think the increased church plants, more churches, increased growth, relationships, connections, Billings Night of Worship where we're coming together and we just have this heart to say, we're gonna do this together because God has called us together, not by ourselves, but called us together to reach a city that desperately needs the gospel of Jesus Christ.